In this video, we will be looking at how to get a response from the neuromuscular junction preparation once the tissue has been set up. The first thing we need to do is calibrate the force transducer. To do this, lower the micromanipulator on the retort stand. The string connecting the muscle should now be slack and transmitting no force to the force transducer. We are not using CuraCloud for the neuromuscular junction prac. Instead, we are using the underlying software which is called LabChart 8. Once you open the settings file on your computer, LabChart 8 will be set up and ready to go. To calibrate the force transducer, press the start button in the lower right hand corner of the LabChart window. You will see the two channels scrolling from right to left. If you cannot see any trace in the upper channel, channel 1, press the auto scale button. The trace in channel 1 should now be visible. With lab chart still running, place the 50 gram weight on the tab of the force transducer. When you do this, you will see the trace in channel 1 deflect upwards. You will probably need to press the auto scale button again in order to bring the whole trace into view. Once you have the deflection due to the 50 gram weight, you can press the stop button in the lower right hand corner. To perform the actual calibration now, select a portion of the trace which includes both the part that represents zero force, as well as the part that represents 50 grams. Next, click the Channel 1 drop down menu and select Units Conversion. The calibration dialog box will appear. Select the portion of the trace which represents zero force and click the small arrow beside point 1. This will enter the value that represents zero force. Next, highlight the portion of the trace that represents 50 grams and press the small button next to point 2. We will enter this weight as 490 millinewtons. Having done this, click OK. To check the calibration, place the cursor over the portion of the graph which represents 490 millinewtons. In the top right hand corner, you should see the correct force being displayed. You can do the same thing with the portion of the graph that represents zero force. Having calibrated the force transducer, we can remove the weight and raise the micromanipulator on the retort stand. This will put tension back into the muscle. In this preparation, we are using an entire gastrocnemius muscle as opposed to the sartorius muscle which we used in the skeletal muscle prac. You may wish to determine how much passive force is required in order to elicit a maximal response from this muscle. If you run the trace, you will see the force being displayed in lab chart as you adjust the tension in the muscle. In this example, I set the tension at around 100 millinewtons. Now, to get a response, set the stimulus strength to something above zero. In this example, I have set the stimulus to one volt, which will generally give a good response. When you click start, the stimulus will be applied, the muscle will twitch, and a response will be seen on the screen. When you have a response on your screen, you can adjust the vertical scale by clicking the auto scale button. You can also adjust the horizontal scale by clicking on the little mountain buttons in the lower right hand corner of the trace. If you stimulate the muscle with a lower voltage, you should hopefully see that the response is also lower. Next, we will try a higher voltage, in this case 1.5 volts, and we can see that the response is also bigger. It is up to you to determine the parameters of your experiment. If you need to determine the stimulus strength that produces the maximal force in your muscle, then do so. Just be aware that this value may be different when you stimulate the muscle directly or myogenically, compared to when you stimulate the muscle neurogenically using the attached sciatic nerve. You may wish to think about why this is the case. In lab chart, the marker can be found in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. 
If the marker is ever not in its box, you can double click on the marker box and the marker will reappear. You can then use the marker to perform whatever measurements you need to perform. Another change you may wish to consider is that rather than delivering your stimuli as isolated single twitches, you may wish to give your stimuli as an ongoing train of individual twitches. This means that each response is occurring under the same conditions as all previous responses, with the same amount of time between twitches and therefore presumably the same amount of internal calcium load. To deliver a continuous stimulus train, click the small button with the infinity symbol under the word repeats. This will then repeat the same stimulus over and over until you press stop. To change the frequency of the stimulus, change the value in the box marked max repeat rate. Note that the lowest frequency possible is 0.1 Hz or in other words one stimulus every 10 seconds. It is up to you to decide which frequency is most suitable for the experiments you wish to perform. Lastly, to keep track of what is going on during your trace, make sure you use comments in order to remind yourself as to what treatment is occurring at that particular point in time. When you stop the trace, you will be able to see your comments when you scroll back through it. You are now ready to perform your experiments.